What's up, worship family? Pastor Andre here, and I'm just bringing you uh, our monthly update on what's going on and what's upcoming and all that. So I appreciate you uh, just taking a few minutes out of your day, and I'll, I'll try to make this quick. Um, a lot of exciting things are, are going on. Um, but before I jump into that, I just want to take a, a moment to recognize some individual achievements of, of people that are just going above and beyond. And I know all of you guys are going above and beyond, so I, I might miss a few people. But I want to take a moment to, to recognize um, Patrick, who's been um, holding down the, the uh, youth ministry for the junior high for probably over a year now. And he's taking a bunch of steps to, to get better at what he does. And he's just on fire and he's faithful. So I wanted to recognize him. Um, I also want to recognize Nate, who has taken over um, the worship for young adults and has been doing a great job with that. So, Nate, keep up the good work. Um, I want to recognize uh, Rachel, who's been also holding Shine Down uh, for over a year now and has been faithful on Tuesday morning. So that's really awesome. I uh, want to recognize that. Um, I want to recognize Dina, uh, who actually sang with me at staff um, yesterday morning uh, which I know was a huge deal so I don't want to take that lightly um, she stepped up to the bat and she sang in front of her peers which is always a not easy thing to do so I wanted to recognize and congratulate Dina for doing that uh, I want to recognize Colette for stepping up and helping SA um, oversee and kind of own the choir and uh, she's also been doing a lot of the green room stocking so thank you for that and we want to recognize you at this time um, Julio also has stepped in with the choir and has been uh, helping uh, play the keyboards and do vocal assessments. So that's been huge. Julio, great job with that. And let's see. And I also want to finally uh, recognize Dorothy, who a few weeks ago um, shared her testimony in the green room, just giving a nugget. And I asked her if she'd be willing um, to share in the congregation. And I, I she strikes me as a, a kind of a private person. So. Um, she stepped out in faith and she did that and I, I believe it really blessed the congregation so we want to recognize uh, just faith stretching in that area so uh, again I appreciate all of you guys and I just want to take a moment just to, to single out a few of you um, jumping into our, our next item um, we want to talk about uh, our upcoming dates of what's going on so the biggest thing on on our plate right now is our worship night that was scheduled for next week has been canceled um, because miles wants to do a live recording at East County on the 20th which is a Monday night so um, in order to get a good congregational turnout we wanted to not have too many Monday night things back to back so we're gonna go ahead and do worship for um, Miles's thing on the 20th and I wanna uh, I wanna ask all of you guys to come out and support that it's kind of a big deal for our congregation to be able to meet and talk with Miles in person and just have him be at our site and so we want to represent and um, and just have that be a good night so I I would love it if you guys can all be there and to um, ask your your um, your fellow teammates to be there as well um, so that's the 20th that's in a few weeks um, our bonfire is tomorrow again I would love to see all you guys out there um, we'll do some s'mores and we'll just kick it and play some music around the the fire so um, we're gonna have that where we had the choirs which I believe was at Shelter Island but I'll post that a little bit later and maybe the mentors can send out a personal text of that location because uh, we don't want people driving around um, all night trying to find us so that will be tomorrow I believe it's at 7 and then we have an all men's night of worship coming up next Tuesday uh, where Steve Ante and I believe Warren and, and Scott I think are all leading at that so if you're a man and you want to come and support those guys and just worship a little bit that'd be awesome and the next upcoming date we have after that is August 2nd we have a choir we have the choir and then after that, Nova's leading at the women's retreat at August 14th. So that is all of the things we have coming up. Um, so moving right along, uh, I wanted to speak a little bit about um, life group and life group requirements. Um, from Miles all the way down, Pastor Miles all the way down, um, 
it is assumed that to be a member at the Rock Church that you, you come regularly on Sundays, you're in a life group and you serve. So I know you guys serve and I know you guys come to church, but I'm not sure about how many of you guys are in a life group. So if you're not, I would strongly encourage you guys to get in one. Um, I have one at my house that's every Thurs of every other Thursday uh, evenings at 6.30. Um, or you can start your own, but whatever it is, um, mentors, if you guys can follow up with your people and make sure that everybody is plugged in a life group, that'd be awesome. Uh, the next thing it, in uh, on my list is uh, Pastor Miles um, gave out a, a free book to you guys last Sunday, and I would like all of us to read that so that we're all on the same page with where our church is headed and 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 just what our, our uh, senior pastor his heart for us is uh, we need to be dialed into that. So if you guys can get that book and this might be something good for them, for you mentors to um, kind of check in on your team once a week to, you know, just talk about the book. Like maybe um, you guys can decide like how many chapters you guys want to read per week and then you can follow up and kind of just talk about it and answer any questions. I think that would be really good. Um, when I was praying uh, to God about, um, what to, to bring in in this Devo um, time section of our of our monthly update? Um, what, what I was brought to is um, the idea of being awed by God and just recognizing the glory of God. Um, I think a lot of times, um, since we're so close to ministry and we minister often, we can almost lose that awe of God where you know that 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 fantastic wonder of who God is and because the world is constantly competing for our time and our attention we need to be conscious that we don't lose that awe so um, what I wanted to do is is I wanted to I was brought to uh, Psalms 145 and and I would like to just give you guys a moment to grab your Bible or to whip your phone out and just Take a moment to to read that. So I'll give you some time. There's a uh, Psalms 145, and I'm reading from an NIV. I guess you could have just hit pause too, right? And then got your Bible out. Forgot this is a, it's a technolo technology at our advantage. But let's just take a moment and read that together. Psalms 145. This is King David trying to wrap his head around. The awesomeness of God but let's go ahead and read that it says I will exalt you my king my God the king I will praise your name forever and ever every day I will praise you and exalt your name forever and ever great is the Lord and most worthy of praise his greatness no one can fathom one generation commends your works to another they tell of your mighty acts they speak of your glorious splendor, of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and the joyful sing, uh, and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful, faithful people extol you. They tell of your glory of your kingdom and they speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and you satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to those all who call on him to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him and he hears their cries and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him 
but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord and let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. So this is a beautiful example of, of kind of coming back to that awe of God. And the reason why this is important for us, if you're, you're wondering for application here, is that we're in a ministry where we we usher people into his his glory, into his presence. And we're not going to be able to do that if we have been numb to the fact of, of God's glory. It says right here, it says in 11, it says, they tell of the glory of your kingdom and they speak of your might. That's what we do as, as a worship communi community. So it's important for us to, to understand the importance of, of always being in God in the awe of God. Um, the awe of God must must dominate the reason for why we even do ministry. We can't um, usher people into a place that we're not even in. And with all the distractions that we have in our lives and, and people, the congregation will come in and some people are worried, looking for work. Some people are worried about their marriage. Some people are wondering what's going on, on Facebook. Some some people are ready to get out of there so they can go watch the baseball game. I mean, you name it, There there's distractions all over the place. So we have to be good ourselves at getting into a place where we are still in at, in awe of God. And so how do we do that? Um, we do that by carving out time in our schedule. Just like you, you carve out time in any, any other place in your schedule, you need to, to carve out time to get alone with God, to get outside or get with your word, get with the word and, and get away and just disconnect. You need to do that um, pretty often and allow God to just remind you of who he is. And this is important because um, our ministry is shaped by the condition of our hearts. So we need to make sure that the condition of our hearts is always in a proper response to who God is. So that's my word for you guys um, this month. And um, I love all of you guys. I absolutely love what's going on in the ministry. Um, I'm getting an opportunity this weekend to go lead up at North County and just kind of see what's going on with that team and and just see the our our uh, North County family. So that'll be awesome. But you guys are all wonderful. Um, I pray for you all the time, every day, and um, I just pray that you guys would be blessed. <laughs>